now in King's Hotel, or better known as Cotton King's. And many, many moons ago, my dear friend, Stephen Joseph was playing at the lounge. So let's have Stephen Joseph once again. We're right here, you know, at the reception of the church, which is very close to you, you know, Stephen. Welcome to our program. Now, maybe you'd like to share with us, you know, how did music begin for you? I know you started at a very young age. Yes, my father was a musician in Singapore. He played in the band, played the electric guitar. So at a very young age, he used to take me along to his band rehearsals. And he just sat there listening intently to music. And that passion just grew from then on, you know, um, to the point where um, when I was only about six years old, my father entered me in the, the radio talent time. Wow. Some somewhere in 1962-63 okay. at the Victoria Memorial Hall. You also became a member of the church choir. Yes. I started off at the Cathedral Choir and then we, a few of us moved to this Novena St. Alphonsus Church and um, it gave me so many opportunities because at the age of 17 I wrote a Mass for the church and then I composed several Christmas carols and um, arranged choral music for the church and you know they believed in my talent. I mean a lot of it's self-taught. I was born with <laughs> Two missing fingers. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you won fame when you and your group Masquerade took part in the Talent Time that was way back in 1978. How did that happen? They were your own friends from the school, right? They were school friends. We started off, you know, in 1972 with Harmony, with Dick Lee, your classmates. And then um, we carried on in various forms. And we knew there was a talent time um, taking place in 1978. And we said it's about time we broke the mold from standing there with guitars or wearing suits. So we had this idea of being super superheroes. <laughs> okay. I was in art school then in Bahru doing graphic design, so I designed the costumes. We got somebody to make them, mm. and he went there with masks. I mean, they had to get permission as to whether we were allowed to wear masks on TV, but we did. And that created a kind of suspense. Mm. We did say that if we got to the finals, we will unmask, which we did. And although we didn't win, we came into, I think that that, that image has lived on mm. and people will remember you, all the people with the masks and, mm -hmm. and the capes. <laughs> you wrote a very special song for the Novena Church way back in 1999 and that was for their 50th anniversary. That's right. Yes, and that song has been sung, you know, almost every year, even during Mother's Day, I was yes. told, you know. All right. Tell us and share with us that composition of yours. When I wrote it, I, I just wrote it. And it, was not, it was quite nice. I, I was quite pleased with it. And um, we made a CD so that we could share it with people. That did very well. And what surprised me was, I mean, you know, 40, 20 over years now, I mean, people are still singing it. As you say, they're singing it on Mother's Day. I've had anonymous letters from Australia, from, even from America, asking me permission mm -hmm. to sing it with church. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, they always have my blessings because it, it's such an honor that mm -hmm. you know, something I've written at home has touched so many. I find that in my kind of darkest hours, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of um, comforted by the fact that I have this to hold on to. Mm -hmm. I think you entered the, uh, the Queen's Jubilee Celebration Competition.
when I finished, it was I sent it at the very last hour, last <laughs> the closing <laughs> date, okay. and submitted it. Mm -hmm. And because I, I can write music, I actually mm -hmm. wrote the score and everything. Everything was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a month later, I got a mm -hmm. letter to say um, I'm one of the twelve selected finalists. I mean, and it was from entries all over the Commonwealth. So that yep. was I was very surprised and shocked at that. And then a few, about a week later, I got another email to say um, I was down to the final three. <laughs> okay. So it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I was told that unfortunately you didn't win, but you know, you're second place. Mm -hmm. But that lives with me because I, not only did I, do I like the, mm -hmm. the, the composition, mm -hmm. but it happened, uh, we, we did have the Jubilee celebration, fortunately, but sadly we lost okay. you know, the Queen yeah. shortly. Yeah. And, I have been there that long. Singapore yeah. was part of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. We were part of the colony. Mm -hmm. So the Queen has been part of my life. I see. Know. Stephen, you've been living in the UK for so long. And uh, I'm sure you are like very bricked in your behaviour, <laughs> the way you speak to. But would you regard UK as your home or Singapore? Because I know you're still a Singaporean. Well, I've been, I've been in the UK between London and Wales. Um, for 42 years, really. So that is home. But so is this. I mean, it, it's very hard to separate the two. I mean, when I'm there, that's always home. But the minute I get off the plane here and I breathe to Singapore, I mean, this is home. And give me literally three minutes or two minutes with somebody from home and I'm talking quite locally. Now I'm talking posh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Then when you were in UK, do you miss Singapore? I mean, do you miss the food? Your I loved do. ones. I do. I mean, I, I miss the hawker food, the things you get on the streets, which you mm. can't find in the Chinese takeaways. You mm -hmm. know. So fortunately, over the years, through the help, with the help of cookbooks, and thank God for YouTube now, I mean, I cook all my own Singapore food. Oh my! My mum, my mum always says, you know, you're mad making tau fu fa or yu jiao kui or you know, but I wow. said I can't get it, so I make. Okay. It, you know. Mm, so you don't really miss the hawker food since you know how to make them? Yeah, I mean, the only, th <laughs> the only thing is, I mean, people around me are not fans of Asian food. So quite often I'll slave in the kitchen all afternoon mm -hmm. and I'll have like four portions of it. And okay. you know, I'll eat one and then you end up, you know, I'm going to eat that tomorrow as well. And, you know, 